that the key point that he makes there, this is the key point. We have mortgaged the next generations. This is the key element here. We have mortgaged the next generations. You know, there is no denying that an extension of the existing policy, first of all, it can only get worse. The debt cannot get smaller because more and more money would have to be sunk into the banks and sunk into the government to be able to pay the existing debt and the new debt and the interest on that. You know, sorry, here's a headline from the Daily Star this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it was the only one that probably uh, got close to, uh, to the mark yet. Look, here's from the Independent. Nobody in the political system can argue they weren't warned about the possible extent of the problems facing the country. You know, the, the awareness at government level. I mean, in Iceland, as you'll see in a second, they've actually charged their former prime minister with malfeasance. You know, mismanagement of the, uh, of the country's economy. You know, Three months ago, a hundred days ago, you know, we had the, the election, and then I was giving a presentation in Castle Bar, and I said, you know, Andy Kenny has 100 days. Any new leader has 100 days to establish whether or not they're going to be going down the same path, or they genuinely are going to introduce a different path. But as we've seen, you know, it, this is the same suit, different time. You know, Constantine Gurdjieff made the observation, if, if uh, right on the election, you know, if anything was going to happen here, Andy Kenny and his team needed to establish that change of direction sooner rather than later. Of course, he went over to Germany to discuss with Angela Merkel and other European leaders a renegotiation of the bailout. And if anybody thinks, by the way, that Christine Lagarde is going to be a soft touch compared to Strauss-Kahn, another thing coming. Because Christian, Christine Lagarde is hard line. She is the protégé of uh, Bill Penn. I mean, she's, she's already uh, starting to um, uh, float the proposition that Ireland's corporation tax rate has to be pushed up to certainly at least 20%. And then again, the Kenny says, well, you know, by backing her election, hopefully she'll um, owe us something. Dream on. Dream on. It ain't going to happen. Angela Merkel is the head witch. She's the head witch. Well, I don't think there's too many people who will dispute that. Yeah, I mean, and, and Andy Kenny is you know, obviously having a rough way as well in the media. But here's the reality, Eurozone is a bottomless pit of debt. There's no possibility here. It's not intended to provide an opportunity for recovery. It's in, what's intended is to obfuscate, to deceive the people into believing that you know, the bailout package is the way to recovery. Sorry, it's the way to abject economic slavery. Increased, increased unemployment is unfortunately a foregone conclusion with this current uh, direction. Particularly, particularly amongst the, um, the young. You know, we've got a situation in the peaks in Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Spain and Greece where 40% of under 30s are either unemployed or underemployed with no really limited opportunity, which is why we're seeing massive right, 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 right. Underemployed? Yes. Underemployed means they're not exactly using their skills or qualifications. You know, they're taking menial jobs when actually they could do a lot better. You know, in Spain we're seeing 200,000 people, primarily young people, primarily young people, hitting the streets because they want to see a change of direction. And they're not getting violent, you know, because the, the guys who are perpetrating this agenda want violence. That's the worst thing to do. They want the violence because they want to be able to introduce even more draconian control. It's not on television. It's not on television. Of course it's not on television. Just like, just like what's going on in Iceland isn't being reported in the media. I mean, Iceland, look, since Iceland has been arresting its bankers, it's been charging its bankers, it's passed legislation to provide whistleblowers with immunity. Because the new Icelandic government acknowledges that it does not have sufficient expertise or experience to fully understand what occurred. And so they're inviting whistleblowers to come forward and give them advice and guidance and to educate them so they can understand what happened and then they can re pursue the real ringleaders of this. You know, a few days ago, no, two weeks ago now, Iceland had a referendum. And the referendum 
was to ask the people whether the Icelandic taxpayer should take responsibility for repaying the debts to Britain um, and the Netherlands and a few other countries. And, and of course it's not their fault. And so the result of the referendum was absolutely correct, which was no way. There's no way at all. You know, the bondholders gambled and the bondholders lost. And there is no way that any taxpayer anywhere in the world should take responsibility for the bondholders' losses. Not to say, not to mention, of course, that in the vast majority of cases, the bondholders don't need the money. I mean, they're already incredibly wealthy. But it's not about the money, is it? It's about the power. Can, can the government take a legal case against, can, can the people, the sovereign people, take a legal case against? They could certainly try it. You do a crossy. Absolutely. You could try it. All the people. But, you know, what's going to have to happen is this is it's the people. You know, Padre uh, McLaughlin came to this presentation in Van Cranach and he sat through the whole evening. And you know these guys know what needs to be done, but they're not going to be able to do it until they sense that there's a groundswell amongst the people. You know, once they know that they've got the support of the people, then obviously they can bring about the change. You know, what we're we're seeing in Greece, we've seen this in Greece for nearly two years. We've seen it in the UK over the past uh, year, primarily the students, because you know the students have to pay their uh, college loans, and they've no possibility in many cases, of getting decent jobs where they can even begin to think about repaying their student loans. You know, let alone, let alone getting on with their lives. So many of them are taking jobs below £15,000, which is the threshold where they have to start paying their loans. You know, Spain is taking a leaf out of South Korea's book. This was a protest in South Korea four years ago. You know, this is what it looked like on the first day, and at night, and the second day, and at night, and so on for seven days. And in this situation, the South Koreans were protesting against the, the South Korean government being forced to import growth hormone contaminated beef by the World Trade Organization. The South Koreans are a nation of farmers and they know exactly what the impact of importing growth hormone contaminated beef would be on their food chain. So they resisted. And the World Trade Organization agreed a fine with the South Korean government. Here in the EU, we also refuse to import growth hormone contaminated beef, so we pay a fine of 140 million euros a year to the World Trade Organization. That's it, it, it's a tax, it's a hidden tax. Look, you know, draconian budget lost to, uh, to a lost decade, which is Lenahan's observation. This is from two years ago in Time magazine, talking about the rising youth unemployment right across Europe, and basically making the observation that you know, it's, a, it's a boiling pot. Yeah. What future are we providing you know, for our young people today, let alone the next generation? As I said, a child born into Ireland in 2011 is born with a tax liability of 200,000 euros minimum, based on the current paradigm. <clears throat> Plus, you know, this was uh, Lenihan again, emigration needs to exceed 100,000. And of course, it's not going to be the people that Ireland can afford to lose. You've already got the New Zealanders and the Australians and the Canadians gagging to offer visas to Irish people, especially young people under the age of 40, who have got skills and specialist qualifications because they know that that's exactly what's needed to be able to rebuild the economy from within. Look, what's going on here? These guys who believe that they are the rightful rulers of a planetary fiefdom rely on three tools. They rely on people falling into one of three categories. They don't care which of these three categories you fall into, as long as you fall into one of them, because then you're no threat. The first one is apathy. First one, if, with apathy, just carry on, just trucking on, your short-term attention span, no problem. The most powerful tool that they have in their armory is abdication. Because by definition, abdication means that we know what's going on, we've got a pretty good idea what's happening, but we deliberately choose to do nothing. <clears throat> and then the last one is willful ignorance. That's what they did in Germany at the start. Exactly. Now, see, they don't care which of these categories we fall into. Because that way we are no opposition to their agenda. So this is, this is really what... Uh, before us right now. You know, by coming along this evening, you've actually presented yourself with a bit of a problem because you either specifically choose to fall into the category of application, because you've got an idea now, at least at the very least, of what's happening, or 
you know, we, we start to determine. Now, I'm not suggesting for one moment that we're going to see change overnight. And unfortunately, unfortunately, as is always the case, things are probably going to get a lot worse before they can get better. But you know, it's just like changes in our personal lives. On the, micro, on the microcosm, when we experience terrible trauma or drama within our personal lives, whether it's financial, relationship, health, career, whatever, but when we come up against great trauma, then it forces us to actually think, to stop and think about the way in which we're interacting with everything that's going on around us. Okay. You know, we have to work on, the, you know, we have to think, you know, is it our own thoughts, our words, our actions, you know, aren't, is that all contributing in any way, shape or form to what's happening around us? We start to live, you know, these are great learning opportunities. Yeah. And maybe that's what's happening here on the macrocosm. You know, what's occurring here is actually providing us with a tremendous opportunity. Zbigniew Brzezinski, allegedly Obama's mentor, Zbigniew Brzezinski, the founder of the Trilateral Commission, 40 years ago he wrote a book called Between Two Ages, The Technotronic Era. Now this is an incredibly prescient book. I mean, he's it, it, talking about a scientific control grid exactly like we see in place today. But in that book he makes this observation, he says, the greatest challenge for Western governments is going to be to keep their people locked into consumerist materialism, preventing them from realizing who they truly are. So he's alluding 40 years ago to some kind of awakening process where people actually start to question whether or not they're just here to be economic slaves or be something more. Last year, on May the 15th, at a speech before the Council on Foreign Relations, and you can find this one on YouTube, he said, the biggest obstacle to establishing a one world government is the rapid political awakening of the masses. So here we've got the same guy, one of the arch strategists of the global agenda. We've got the same guy, 40 years apart, talking about a spiritual awakening and now a political awakening. Well, the reality is that you know, all of this stuff that is happening is contributing to people waking up. You know, in, like I said earlier, you know, that even the Obama stuff and the, the birth certificate issue and the Osama bin Laden, more and more people are turning in, the North, in North America to the alternative media. And they're starting to question the veracity of their mainstream media. And that's really, I think, what's probably going to have to happen here in Europe. You know, it's going to have to get worse. People are going to have to feel it. It's going to come up close and personal. And when it gets up close and personal, people might actually say, stop and go, hang on a goddamn second. Hang on, God, that's it. What's really going on here? What's the effect on me? But more importantly, more importantly, what is the legacy that we are leaving the next generations? Thanks very much indeed.